He is 19-year-old Mohammed Hamza Khan, and he was nabbed in Chicago's O'Hare Airport. The next stop was supposed to be Turkey. Now, what he thought he was going to do is equal parts naive and, frankly, shocking. All right, Chris, let's investigate this further with Tom Fuentes. He's a CNN law enforcement analyst and a former FBI assistant director, and David Gartenstein Ross, a senior fellow with the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Gentlemen, thanks so much for being here. Tom, let me start with you. Where do you think this 19-year-old got a $4,000 round-trip Turkey uh, ticket to Istanbul? Well, that's a good question, uh, Allison. But we know that ISIS has a lot of money. Uh, and we've heard about the income that they've had from selling oil on the black market, uh, as well as uh, ransoms being paid, especially by European countries, for some of their hostages. So, so they have money. They're paying their fighters uh, various amounts in the field to fight and would have money to uh, probably send to him and, uh, and do it. And they have quite a sophisticated logistical support network to get people into Syria and Iraq. So, David, the authorities arrested this kid at O'Hare Airport before he ever boarded the plane, which seems like great police work. How do you think he was even on their radar? That's a good question. Uh, it's most likely that he was on the radar because he was communicating online with uh, basically someone who seems to have been a recruiter, uh, someone who's uh, referred to as Individual C in the complaint. Uh, assuming that's the case, the U.S. has ele excellent electronic surveillance and uh, would have been likely, especially if the communication was not encrypted or only crudely encrypted, to pick up on this discussion. So, Tom, you just heard in that report, this teenager, Mohammed Khan, he left this note for his parents. And basically he said that he felt compelled to his word migrate to ISIS because he wanted, he said, to do some kind of public service. He said he wanted to provide some sort of humanitarian work over there. So what part of the ISIS message is he missing? How could he, if he's online, think that they're doing humanitarian work rather than their barbaric attacks? I don't know how he could possibly think it's humanitarian. You're right. And, you know, what they delusionally think in a situation like this, we really don't know. But, you know, ISIS, Al Qaeda, most analysts uh, believe that the terror groups have killed about 85% of their victims being Muslim. So, and including ISIS. You know, if you're, you're you know, yes, ISIS is going after Yazidi and Kurds and a few others. But their predominant victims uh, intentionally are Shia Muslims, and then moderate Sunni Muslims are also considered infidels by them. So, so if you're going to join a group like ISIS, you're going to kill Muslims. But David, is it possible that we're missing some of the message and that this kid had it right, it, at least in the PR, in other words, the propaganda that they're putting out, that they claim that you, you will get stability, you'll get family values, you'll be able to do important work. Is that all online? Yeah, they absolutely claim that. It's, it's a group that has very mixed messages. Uh, in addition to seeing the uh, photos of beheadings and uh, other atrocities that they're committing, you can also see uh, photos online of them uh, setting up, for example, Fun Day for Kids, where they have inflatable slides and things like that. Uh, you also have um, a, a number of photographs and demonstrations of them carrying out charitable works. Also, when he's talking, when Han is talking about uh, taking part in humanitarian activities, he means humanitarian in a very different way than we do. To him, most likely, given his radicalization. He thinks that this harsh imposition of Sharia law is in itself a humanitarian good that's being given as a gift to the population. Oh, fascinating. So, Tom, uh, he was going to fly in and out of Turkey, and we've heard that uh, Westerners who are trying to join the fight are using Turkey as the uh, entrance point. Is Istanbul now a red flag for law enforcement here in the U.S.? I think so. Uh, you know, particularly you know, and 19 year olds don't typically go to, you know, take a vacation in Istanbul, uh, you know, on a regular basis. And this is what we're seeing is that many of the people that have gone to join uh, have traveled through Turkey to get there. And ISIS has, again, a, a logistical network set up there that once he's there, they'll arrange the transportation to get him into Syria or mm -hmm. Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, David, very quickly, is this kid really going to get 15 years in prison? Well, 15 years is what's sought. Uh, often you'll have a plea bargain and he'll get some sort of reduced sentence. My guess is that he won't get 15 in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, David Gartenstein, Ross, Tom Fuentes, thanks so much for your expertise. Always great to talk to you guys.